So let's say you want to animate a sprite, but you got eight different directions within the sprite. I'll open up a sprite page that I have, or a little sprite sheet that I use for animating. So what you're going to need to make a sprite sheet is you're going to have to have eight different rows and a, a certain number of columns that contain the animations. So instead of columns, I like to say the width of the sprite sheet, which uh, in this case is 10. And the height of the sprite sheet is always going to be 8, no matter which sprite sheet I'm using. And so the you could imagine just saying that the number of rows are fixed in this case. Because like I'm, uh, this is for like an isometric type of game. And uh, yeah, so basically the width will store the entire animation from that direction. And yeah, and you'll just go down, these will all be different directions. See, and uh, what I'm doing is I'm also following, when I'm making my sprite sheet, I'm following the trigonometric type of graph. So if you look at it, this is east, which is like, uh, well, I'll make a little, I'll make a new file over here. All right, so basically with tri trigonometry, you have the y-axis, x-axis, and yeah, and it goes like that, bam. Okay, so there's a positive side, that's the negative x-axis, so it's positive x, positive y, and negative y, right here. So I'll just draw arrows right there, and bam. So, right here, you can see the um, the my what I call my meat goblin, and you can see um, on the sprite sheet that it's facing east. So that um, in trigonometry would be like a value of zero or two pi, and um, yeah, so. What I'm labeling this as, I'm keeping kind of like an integer value. I'm just focusing on that. I'm not actually like uh, using 2 pi or something. So like, uh, and then the next one would be like pi over 4, pi over 2, all that. all You know all that fun stuff. You don't need to take trigonometry for this. But yeah, so what I'm really doing is like for, uh, you're storing eight different directions. It's a lot easier to process if you're just using like energy value, like kind of like a boolean in a way. So let's say that you have a one right here, and this. So that's that's a uh, that's the second angle after this one. I'm kind of storing it like an array, and this is a two right here. Three, four, five, six, seven. So you could just imagine like those are all the different directions that you can see. So yeah, I'm kind of storing it as kind of like, oh, here's frame one, here's frame two, here's frame three, or uh, here's direction one, direction two, direction three. But yeah, in my class, I call it frame just because uh, I was, I'm still kind of like, you know, fiddling with it a little bit, but yeah. So I'll go to my class and okay, let's see. Okay, so right here. So I call it ISO animation. It's uh, It plays the same animation from eight different directions. The entire alg algorithm depends on the H frames, and the H frames are these, like I said earlier. So this one has 10 frames each. So yeah, and uh, yeah, and the frame is the current direction. Zero is east, one is north, east, two is north, six is south, seven is northeast, so on, you know? Uh, I, I kind of just like shortened it a little bit because like you can kind of see the pattern. It keeps moving west or counterclockwise, but yeah. It, and that's pretty much what trigonometry does. Um, in trigonometry, counterclockwise is always positive, going this way. And so that's how I kind of got that going. And if you wanted to, if you wanted to change this class up and maybe have it go, uh, have it go clockwise to be the uh, actual direction, to have that positive, then you could do that. But for me, it's negative. But yeah. And let me see. So right here, I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see better. Yeah, and uh, so the first thing that does is like, I have a class called Anaclass that's in here, it's in Godot. I focus, I did, I uh, wrote that in another video. And uh, yeah, so it's the class I always use. There is an animation player thing, and but I like to, I, I just wanted to make my own just for shits and giggles. I've actually never used an animation player. But um, yeah, I'm I'm guessing you could do that with, you could do the same thing with that. But right, you might need to write this type of function. I, I came up with this other one that just like plays one frame at a time, and then it waits for it to be called again, basically. And you have to play it in a loop. Okay, so with the ISO animation, so you, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta pass in 
an anti class variable so you could uh, keep the changes right here because you gotta set a frame number and uh, you also need to have a sprite because I'm using H frames from the sprite and you need to have the direction frame what I was going over right here which is uh, uh, wait it was in paint it was in the 0 1 2 3 4 so 0 is east 3 is like northwest 6 is south 7 is southeast sorry so uh, pretty much after that you gotta store a frame number somewhere so like the current frame you're on because you could have the vertical frames times the uh, horizontal frames amount of actual frames so that's what Godot goes by it goes by a singular number so that's 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 you know until it hits its 10 right here so that would be 9 and then it hits 10 11, 12, 13, 14, until you hit around 79, I think, right here. I think that's where you'll hit his last little frame. So it's whatever that is. So it's basically, um, yeah, and that's what it is. So I so what I do is there's only 10 frames, so you got mod it by those H frames. There's only 10 frames per animation, and you, you don't want to play more than that because then it'll start bleeding the, into these. It'll start bleeding into these animations, or I'll just start doing something weird. And uh, yeah, so what you do is you get the frame number. So let's say it's like 74. So if you mod that by 10, you'll get 4. Bam! That's just nice. Like, it was a nice one to start with because it was just 10. You're basically just like, that was, you're just like taking off a digit each time you mod it. So it was kind of nice. Okay, and then after that, you have to set the frame number to the, um, to that current frame. And then you add it to the, um, to the direction frame times the horizontal frames. What I'm gonna do here is treat the picture or sprite sheet like a 2D array. The current frame is the current frame of the animation being played and you add that to the direction or row times the horizontal frames or columns. You can kind of imagine this is like the zero row, one row, two row, three row, four row, five row, six row, seven. And then you have like 10 columns. So to get to different rows, so you got times by 10 to get to this row. And times by another 10, times by 10, like by 20 to get to this one, times by 30 to get to this one, times by 40 to get to this row. So that's why you got to uh, multiply by the horizontal frames. If you've ever did like um, 1D to 2D array like operations and stuff. So like with a 2D array, well, you basically that's what I'm doing though is I'm splitting this whole picture into a 2D array and let's see I'll just like make up a bullcrap array so let, let's say you have I'll do the same amount so 10 columns and 8 vertical and 8 rows so that that's 80 elements so each time you want to get to another row in a singular array let, let's say with 80 elements which would be the same then you would have um, you would have to uh, do like let's say you want to get the third row, you do three times ten. So bam, that's how you get to that row. So you get to the thirty row or what like whatever, like which would be let's say uh so it's zero, ten, twenty, thirty. So I it'd be getting to the northwest row. So yeah, it's a little confusing when you see it like that, but yeah. That's kind of why I stored all the directions as integers, because it's easier to like it's easier to manipulate this way through um, frames, through a 2D array. So yeah. So because of that, I create a match statement. And what a match statement it is, is basically a switch statement where if um, it, it passes in some type of value and then it jumps to one of these if it's the correct one. And in Godot, compared to other languages, you'll have to put breakpoints, which is kind of nice. It's also a little confusing. If you wanted to put a default value, like if it didn't hit any of these and you would do this but I don't need to do that there's no point there's no point in putting it else so it basically be like having a bunch of ifs and else ifs then um, having an else at the end but um, right here I have uh, I'm calling the animation function since I already got all the work done that I need to so if start frames less than max frame it adds one and if uh, start frames less uh, no wait, start frames greater than uh, max frame then it minus is one so basically it plays it backwards or it plays it normal. So if you pass it a start frame that's lower, so a start frame that's lower than the max frame, then it will automatically play normally. If you pass the start frame that's higher than the max frame, then it'll play backwards. And so it's I think it's a pretty simple function. 
But yeah, that's all it does. It just like adds a frame, subtracts a frame, and sets the sprite to that frame, and then yeah. Also, I'm just gonna apply another quick fix to the animation function. Instead of an else, there should be an else if, and it should be if start frame is greater than max frame. Because we do not want to subtract if it's equal. Because then it'll just, if you accidentally pass in a start frame that's equal to max frame, it'll just play forever. And like you'll be wondering what the fuck is going on. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, basically all that's going to happen <coughs> if it is equal now is that it, it won't do anything. The fr frame number won't move. And the frame number is going to be equal to start frame. So it just won't do anything. It'll just like go through. It'll just think it's already done basically. And yeah, that's it. So that's basically what this function does. And um, I'm just passing in the H frames. So here's the, the max frame for the animation is a last frame in the H frames. You gotta subtract by one because it's an array, basically. And um, and you start with zero, which is the first picture. And here's 10, that's row one, row two, row three. And just imagine these as the rows right here. So basically it's just like 2D array manipulation once again. And um, yeah, so it's just really nice just to do it this way. And it's actually, it, I thought it was going to be very complicated, but I actually ended up getting it done very fast. This is like a really good thing for sprites. I'll show you an example of it running. Let me see. I have a little like thing right here. And uh, yeah, so it plays, it, it like uh, it's able to move around in eight different directions. And see, look, now it's chasing me. And yeah, so I got like playing and bam. So it just keeps running at me, keeps running. And like uh, it changes direction constantly depending on the rotation of my camera. Yeah, I think the other video was a little laggy, but here, here's a bunch of them. I just made a bunch of them in the map. Look, they're all freaking chasing after me. It's crazy. It's like, whoa, oh my god, they're jumping over each other. Like they're a bunch of like little, um, like Pikmin's or something. Yeah, what they're trying to do is they're trying to see me, they're trying to find my ass. So yeah, pretty much I, I, I just run away from them. And they just keep chasing me. It's crazy as hell. But yeah. You see all of them, it's like running pretty nicely. And yeah, it's nice. So I hope you guys have a good day. And I hope you guys learn some stuff. And yeah, hope I got hope I helped you on some shit.